In this session, we are going to begin considering something called discounting. Let's start with a very simple scenario. If I asked you, would you prefer to receive a thousand pounds now or a thousand pounds two years in the future? Which would you rather get? Well, most people would respond by saying they prefer to receive the thousand pounds now. And the reason for that is that a thousand pounds is worth more now than it will be worth in two years' time because of factors like inflation. So, we expect then that a thousand pounds is worth more now than in two years, or than it will be in the future. For example, due to inflation. If prices are going to go up in the future, then the value of a thousand pounds, so the amount we can buy with that thousand pounds, is going to go down. This is called the time value of money. <clears throat> so how does this relate to our investment appraisal? Well, if you think about it, as a company, we might decide to invest in the development of a new product now. And perhaps our initial expenditure now is going to be £100,000. But we know we're going to earn revenue of £100,000 on that product in two years' time. Is the investment a good idea? We're investing £100,000 and we're going to get £100,000 back. So it would appear we're not going to lose any money. But that's not really true because the £100,000 we spend now is worth more than the £100,000 we're going to get back in two years' time. So in discounting, what we are doing is we are looking at if we are going to receive £50,000 one year from now, how much, of that, how much is that £50,000 worth in today's terms? Now, just before we move on, we want to look at the distinction between compounding, which we looked at in a previous session, and discounting. When we look at compounding, we start at a time point now, so we're going to call that T0, or now. And we have an initial investment going in to some point in the future, time period N. And when we are compounding, we start with this initial investment and work out how much will that investment be worth at the end of period N? So this is compounding, where we are calculating the future value of an amount invested now. When we are discounting, we do the reverse. So we are looking at a sum of money at some point in the future, so perhaps a future cash flow, and we are discounting back to calculate how much is that future cash flow worth in today's terms. So taking into account the time value of money that we mentioned before. So when we are discounting, we are working backwards from the future value to calculate the present value of that sum. Now we're going to look at a straightforward exercise to get us started on discounting. So we are asked to calculate the present value of $80,000 at the end of year 5 if an interest rate of 10% per annum applies. So right now we are standing at T0, which is now. We've got... T1, which is one year from now, T2, two years from now, T3, T4, and T5. 
So T5, this is the end of year five, or five years from the present moment. At that point, we are going to receive $80,000. Now, we need to discount back to calculate the present value if the future value is $80,000 and an interest rate of 10% per annum applies. Now remember, when we looked at compounding, <coughs> we said that the future value of an investment is equal to the present value multiplied by 1 plus or to the power of n. If we just move that around a little bit, then we could say that the present value is equal to the future value divided by 1 plus r to the power of n. And if we just separate that fraction out a little bit, we could say that the present value is equal to the future value multiply by 1 over 1 plus r to the power of n. And that is our formula then for calculating the present value of a sum of money to be received at some point in the future. So, plugging in the numbers then, <coughs> the present value of our 80,000 will be 80,000 multiplied by 1 divided by 1 plus r, which is our rate, 10% or 0 0.1, to the power of n, where n is the number of time periods, in this case, 5. So we get the present value is equal to 80,000 multiplied by 1 all over if we work this through, 1.1 to the power of 5, you're going to have to put that into your calculators. What have you gotten? Well, you should get 1.61051, which is equal to 80,000 multiplied by 0.6209. When we work that through then, the present value of our $80,000 to be received in five years' time is $49,674. Okay, so we have a formula and we worked through the calculations and calculated the present value. However, there is a quicker method of doing this particular question. For present value questions, the examiner does give you some assistance in the exam. That assistance comes in the form of present value tables. So in the exam, you will be provided with present value tables, which look like this. So, these tables tell us the present value of $1 given an interest rate of R or a discount rate of R and N is the number of periods until the payment. So, this figure, 1 plus R to the power of minus N is the same as 1 all over 1 plus R to the N. Remember in our formula that we looked at a moment ago, the formula we have for calculating the present value of a future cash flow is the future value multiplied by 1 all over 1 plus r to the power of n. So if we know what the rate is, the discount rate, and we know what the number of time periods is, Instead of doing this part of the calculation, we can just look at the present value tables. Now, in this particular question, our rate is 10% and the number of time periods is 5. So, n is equal to 5. If we look back at our tables, you can see the time periods, n, are down the left-hand side, 
and the rates are shown across the top. So if we are looking for the discount factor to be applied for a period of five years with a rate of 10%, we just look at n is equal to 5 and r is equal to 10% and find the value where these two values intersect. And we see that the discount factor we have to apply is 0 0.621. So instead of doing the calculations ourselves then, we know that the present value is equal to the future value multiplied by 1 over 1 plus r to the power of n. So the present value is 80,000 multiplied by 1, 1 over 1 plus r to the power of n, which we have lifted directly from the tables. And we are told that that is 0 0.621. Now, if we look back up at our calculation, we can see that we worked this figure out for ourselves. So you can do it yourself, but it's much easier to just lift this value from the present value tables. So when we multiply that through, we will get our 49674. There may be slight difference just because of rounding differences, but we've done the very same thing.